Today we'll be doing a wreath and a centerpiece with copper. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own. I'll start with a textured thrifted pumpkin. We're going to change them a bit. I'm going to take this Deco Art Worn Penny Paint, my favorite paintbrush. We're going to need some floral foam and something to put our arrangement on. This will be our centerpiece. It needs to be cleaned first, so I'm going to give it a good wipe down and then take a fresh paper towel and dry every bit of it off. If it's not dry, the glue will not stick and we want it to stay in place. Okay, so now we're going to work on this pumpkin. We're going to put protect our surface here, shake that paint up really well because it will it almost separates like oil and water. Put some of it in the dish. I did not put enough in there, but it's better to use a little and add it than to use, just to waste a bunch of paint. So I'm just going to load my brush up with paint and start putting it on the pumpkin. This video is a little more laid back. It's got a little more, a little less editing cuts as far as taking out stuff and skipping ahead. And I've just put it on fast forward so you can kind of see a little bit more of what I'm doing. So I'm laying the paint on from that brush. I'm running the brush back and forth because there's paint on both sides and all in the center of the bristles. This is very textured so it takes quite a bit to get in all of the cracks and grooves. That's what you see me doing here. I always save the bottom for last. That way I don't have paint stuck on the bottom, stuck on the paper, and then every time I move my project, the paper comes up with it and makes just a big mess. So now we're working on the bottom. Same thing here. No need to waste paint in the center because you're not going to see that. Okay, this pumpkin is going to take two coats of paint. So I'm gonna put it aside, put it in front of my fan, and dry it. That's how I dry my things. I use a standing fan. I put it on a special protected surface against the wall and I put it on high. While that is drying, we're gonna put our foam in the dish. Now you can see there that it is sunken down and we need to raise it up. So I'm going to take another piece of this foam. This is just a piece of scrap foam that probably came from an Amazon box, to be honest. I'm just gonna load that sucker down with some paint I mean some glue and then I'm going to put some glue on the top as well. You want to make sure that this part doesn't move around because you're going to be tugging around on this, poking it, maneuvering it, shove it from side to side with your with your picks, you know, your greenery and your floral and you don't want it to come loose. Okay, so now we're going to start on the next project. This is our bicycle wheel that came from Dollar Tree. Right now it is black. We're going to take our metallic copper paint outside and give it a good coat. I only used one coat, but I mean I really sprayed it down good. Here is two coats of that paint on the pumpkin. We're going to let that wheel dry while we work on our arrangement. Okay, if you want something quick and simple, here it is. Pitberry garland rolled up. There you go. But if you want to do it like me, pick some berries and stems and leaves that coordinate well with your copper pumpkin and with the decor you're already using in your home. And for me, it was these oak leaves and these leaves actually came out of I think it was a Big Lots wreath from many, many, many years ago. I've always loved the colors and I've used them in so many different projects. And the good thing about this is they still have the little picks in there. Now they aren't the strongest picks, so you will see them bend a little bit just like that. But that is not a problem. I'm just going to keep working with it. If you don't like that and you get maybe some leaves that are bending on you, just get some of those florist picks. Um, you can get the ones that are wooden, like a large toothpick on the bottom, and they have the wire on the top. And you can just wrap it around the part of the stem that you do have and make your own picks. And that will make it probably a little bit quicker and easier for you once you get to this part. Okay, so I'm going to start with putting four out. I'm going to put 
in them, put them kind of like the corners of a square. I'll put them on the bottom flat against the sides of that bowl so they're laying straight down. The next layer is going to be one in between each of those, more of like a 45 degree angle. So we're starting to come up a little bit. You don't want to put anything straight up because the center is where you want to set your pumpkin and you want to have space. I do check that several times while I'm doing my project to make sure that my pumpkin still has room to sit flat down on that disc, on the foam disc. These are thrifted branches that I found and they, I don't know if they are berries or pomegranates. I'm not sure what they are, but they almost have like a copper, oh, I don't know, almost a coppery color to them. And I like that. I think it's very rustic looking, very cottagey looking. So it fits for what I'm working with. You can also get branches and little pomegranate branches at Dollar Tree. You can use any type of thrifted branch that you like. These colors are matching with what I like. Use whatever colors you like. I know blue looks really nice with copper also. Uh, browns look good. Burgundy, anything really looks good with copper. It's a metal, so you can pretty much do whatever your heart desires. Now with the picks that I use, there's, it's so much on it. They're such good quality picks that you can really use every single bit. And you will also see me use the bottoms that you don't normally use in decorations with Dollar Tree picks. In other words, they look like a real piece of wood or a real branch. Once you cut the leaves and the berries off, they still look like a branch. And I do use that in this project. So you'll see me do that. If you get a better quality floral, you'll be able to use even more of it. So sometimes it's worth it just to pay a little bit more. Maybe get your items on clearance after the holidays and save them for the next year. Um, things like that. Use coupons where you can. I know certain stores like Joann's and Michael's will let you use coupons. So those are ways to save money to get some quality florals. Okay, so you can see this is filling out nicely, and my pumpkin still has a little place to rest right in the middle. I move my items around when I am decorating them. I turn them from side to side. I look above them. I look, you know, like eyeball surface to check and make sure that I don't have gaps or problems or too much of one thing in one area. So that's what you see me doing now. Turn it around. If you have a turntable, set your item on the turntable or the little um, Lazy Susan, and just turn it around. Then you can add in all little bits and picks. See, there's that stem. I'm gonna add right here to the side. Here's another one. Put those wherever you want, wherever they, f you know, it looks like it feels right to you. It's nature, so nothing's perfect. And then, yeah, just like that. Do what feels right going to keep turning that around. I'm going to keep playing around with my greenery, adding in spots. Um, you can see there on the bottom kind of right corner that it needs a little something extra. So I'm fluffing about a bit and may add another piece or two there. And this is how it is looking so far. So I'm happy so far. I'm going to take that bottom and use some hot glue. I don't want to destroy my pumpkin. It's not foam. It's more like a, a hollow resin type thing. I'm gonna press that down and make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. And then just hold the top while I'm looking at it um, so that the glue doesn't come apart and it doesn't fall over. You can see I'm holding that stem. And I like that stem the way it is. I didn't wanna paint that. That was intentional. Okay, so now here is our copper bicycle wheel. All fixed up. I only did the front because no one's gonna see the back. I'm trying to be stingy with my paints here's some more of those picks these are some thrifted picks they are maybe grapevine i'm not sure but they came off of another wreath that i picked apart as well love doing that if you're at a thrift store and you just think to yourself gosh i really don't need another wreath but i love the greenery buy it anyway it doesn't cost much you can take it apart you can use your greenery on another project and you can use a wreath for something else perfect two for one right okay so we're gonna do zip ties instead of using wire this time it saves me a little bit of time I have an abundance of zip ties so this is what I'm gonna do 
This is not going to be completely covered. It's going to be more like three quarters in greenery. And then you're going to be able to still see part of the wheel, which I like. And you can see there's a little part there where it was still attached to the wreath that it was on. So I'm just going to cut that off and get it off of there. And now I'm going to choose the next little one. I chose the top one because it had berries in it. This little piece does not have any berries in it. I want to keep it balanced so I am paying attention to that type of thing. So I'm just going to lay this over the wire from the other pick. And then I'm going to take this one, kind of curve the branches a little bit, make sure that's what I want. And I do like that one. So I'm going to zip tie that on. It's overlaying that branch that's underneath it as well. Okay, and when you turn it over, you can also add wire or some more of these zip ties anywhere along the way that you see to keep it in the curve, to keep it a round, a more formed wreath. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so now we're going to add it the other direction and we're going to leave a gap in the middle because we're going to do something different there. So I'm just pushing that down. This one has some berries in it. I'm going to turn it and then secure the back side. This particular pick was a little bit larger than the other, the ones I had on the other side. So it kind of stands on its own pretty well, but we're going to add another one to it. Okay. So now when it's hanging, this is how it is going to look. You can see that it's on, it's like three quarters covered. And then that top, um, say 12 o'clock to three o'clock is going to be open. There'll be nothing there. Now I'm pulling those out. They are on wires. So I can pull them apart and fluff them up and make them look nice. Gonna make them stand out a little bit more. Like a pretty fluffy leaf pile. Now we're gonna work on this section. We are going to make a funky bow. So I'm gonna choose a variety of beautiful ribbon. This one came from Dollar Tree. This orange, like a burnt orange, it came from Dollar Tree. These coordinate nicely with these colors. This is a thrifted piece of ribbon. It's like a silk on wire. So this is going to be with it. And then you'll see me adding some more on shortly. So what I'm doing is taking about 18 inches of the ribbon. And I'm going to fold it in half and start making me a pile down there. 18 inches of each one of those, laying them down. You can make it longer. You can do two feet. You can do, you know, however big you want your bow to be. I'll show you what I mean in a moment. So I'm gonna use a couple of different ones. I ran out of my plaid, so I had to actually just use one of those, but I'm gonna fill in with something else. And then this is some more thrifted, I love this one, um, thrifted wired ribbon. It's all wired and that's very important for this type of a bow. So you're gonna hold your bow up, you're gonna go down about four inches. You want your tail to be longer than the bow. Okay, so you see what I'm doing here. I'm pinching it up. I'm gonna hold it in the crook of my fingers between my first finger and my thumb. We're gonna do the same thing. I'm measuring it against the bow that's right beside it or the loop that's beside it. So we have the same measurement. You're going to do this, pinching it and then tightly holding it in the crook of your hand there. You can see all these loops will be the same size. You're going to grab your pieces up like this I'm gonna pinch them into your hand. I'm just measuring, you can see what's going on here. All the tails are hanging below. Gonna go on to my next color. And you're gonna add all your pieces in this exact same way. Kind of separate the ones that are similar. You know, you wanna leave, you wanna space them out a little bit. You're gonna have more freedom to move it around in a bit. But when you're initially doing it, kind of space them away from each other. So here you go. You almost have a little balloon bouquet in your hand. You're going to take your zip tie and without letting go of your bow. See what I did there? I crossed it right across my hand and then I'm going to cinch my bow. Now I'm not going to do this completely tight 
until I check and check again to make sure that these are the same height. What I've done is just cinched them up enough to hold them together while I move them around. Then I'm going to tighten them up. So what I just did there was tighten, tighten, tighten as tight as you can get it and then cut off your excess. Okay? Now when you first start doing this, you're going to think, what have I done? I've just wasted all of this ribbon. But no, give it time. This bow takes time and fluffing. See, I'm pulling all the tails out and apart. Out and apart, like an octopus. The loops on the top are the octopus head, and all of these are the legs that are spreading out underneath it. Do you see? Flip it over, pull them apart. Separate your patterns, separate your colors. You can do that because this is wired ribbon. So you're gonna pull, twist, fluff, and keep working on your bow. Get those pieces where you want them and fluff them. You can twist. If your pattern is underneath, twist it and it will stay. Good quality ribbon counts a lot. Um, sometimes the ribbon that you get at Dollar Tree is not very sturdy and it won't hold. You have to really fuss with it. But some of it's really good. Like this orange and this burlap, this stuff is some great ribbon. I have used it for years and it has never let me down. So keep doing that. You want to dovetail all of your ends and then I will show you how you can just kind of curl those. If you put them between your first and second finger, I mean your, yeah, well, your pointer and your middle finger, there you go, and you run it down the ribbon, you will put a bend in the wire, like an even bend, so it will arch it up. Or see here how I did that? There you go. Or you can just bend it with your fingers. Just walk down it with your fingers and curl it under. That's what you do. You want to curl each one of those little ends under. And then you can trim it where you need to trim it. Um, and it's going to look nice for you. Now this part, part is optional. Um, but this is how I attach this type of a ribbon to my arrangements. I'm going to take a piece of thin floral wire. It needs to be sturdy enough that it won't, you know, that you can feed it through the ribbon and you're going to just feed it through a couple of the ones that are that you can reach in the center there so i'm just going in a circular motion going through the ribbons on the bottom you can see there then i'm going to pull them up so that i have to I have the little see there little hanger holders little free wires i'm going to give it an initial twist or two then i'm going to flip it over and just wrap it around the wire on the back of the wreath now you may think, okay, you just turned that upside down and squished it, and now you got to refluff it. Well, yeah, you do. You do have to refluff it. But I want you to know, in crafting, one of my favorite things to do is fluff a bow. It's not for everybody, but I love it. I love seeing a transformation. Look at that bow. That bow is the perfect bow for this arrangement. But I'm missing the fact that my plaid ribbon there is just... We're going to fix that. We're going to add some more plaid. So I'm going to take a curtain hanger, or this may be a shower curtain hook. Who knows? I'm going to take the hanger part off, take my copper paint, and I'm going to spray paint this ring copper. While it's drying, I'm adding some more of that plaid ribbon. I had a tiny bit left. It wasn't long enough to put it in the initial bow, but it's enough to add some more tails. So I'm going to dovetail it, fold it in half into a V, and I'm gonna place it right there and leave the tails a little bit longer than the rest of it because I really, really love that ribbon. Okay, see there? Isn't that pretty? Oh, I love it. Okay, so here's some faux leather ribbon. It is a brownish color. It's the only one I've been able to find at Dollar Tree and I'm gonna add it to this ring to make a hanger. I've seen these on items um, at craft stores and I thought, you know, I can definitely do that myself and show you guys how to do it so that we get a more high-end look without paying $50, $60 for it. I mean, how much would you pay for this wreath if you saw this? And don't you think something that is this quality could be found in a craft store or a, de you know, a home decor store? Definitely. I could definitely see this hanging in Kirkland's or, you know, someplace like that, an at-home store. So you're just going to feed this through the top, 
pinch it down. You can protect your fingers. You always should. I just didn't because this is really thick and I didn't need to for this. I didn't feel. I'm going to add some here too to secure my ring. See, they're saving the paint. It was still silver on the back. And there we go. Look at that. All right, I want to add right here just a little pumpkin. I felt like it needed a little more of a reminder of fall coming up. I'm going to put that partly on the ribbon and partly on the frame and on the leaves that are underneath it. And press it down. And there we go. All right, our two projects are complete. And this is what we have. What do you think about these? Is this something that you would buy and have in your home? I love the look of these. These are gonna be great in my own home. And I hope that this is something that has inspired you to do something with some Dollar Tree items for your home. That wheel is amazing. I wish I would have gotten more, but I was trying to not be stingy. I wanted to share with everybody else who wanted them. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye!